From the Kodesh Family Church, Germantown, Pastor Happy will inspire you with the practical and down-to-earth Bible-based teachings that will refresh, energize, and motivate you to do your best for the Lord. Join Pastor Happy now as he ministers the Word of God. As you Welcome, Pastor Happy. Shall we pray? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Send forth your word and you heal us of our infirmities. Let your word come forth. Let it cleanse us, Lord. Hope is in your word. Let the hopeless receive hope, Lord. Deliverance. It's in your way. Let the weak say, I am strong. One that is sick, Lord, by your stripes, receive healing. Thank you for gathering us today. We could not have been gathered if it had not been for you, Holy Spirit. So we thank you. I pray that we walk out of here liberated. Walk out of here with our faith increasing. And we look always unto you, the author and finisher of our faith the name of Jesus Christ. Shake one or two people. Tell them the Lord is good. Amen. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Shall we be seated? Look straight in his wonderful face. And the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Lord, your name is higher than the heavens. Lord, your name is higher than all created things. It's higher than hope. It's higher than dreams. The name of the Lord. We your anchor in a storm so glad when the clouds unfold their wings so strong when the strong tide rains and the cables strain we your anchor in the remain the God on the mountain is the God in the valley when things go wrong he will make them right the God of the good time is the God in the valley the God of the day 
is the God in the now. You talk of faith when you are up on the mountain. Faith comes so easy when life at its best. Now you are in the valley of trials and temptation. That's where your faith is really put to the test. For the God, for the God of the mountain. It's the God in the valley. When things go wrong, He will make them right. The God of the good times. The God in the bad The God of the day. Is that God in the night? He can do it, do better for you. Far more than you can think that He will ever do. Can do it. He can do it, do it better for you. Surely he will do. Hold on to your faith, your confession of the days of your life, and you will see the hand of the Lord in your life. I promise he can do it. He can do it. Do it better for you. Believe it. Come on, down. he can think. Just believe it, he can do, he can do it, do it, better for you. Five more times you can think, I will ever do. What we've just done, just we've taken our yoke, which is so heavy, we put on the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ. His yoke is light and He will give rest to our souls. May the Lord give rest to our souls. May our cries turn to morning. May joy rise each morning with us. That we will live in the joy of the Lord. The glory of the Lord will overshadow us. In the name of Jesus. For this is a promise we have that when we speak to Him, we know how he hears us. Then if we know he hears us, then we have the confidence that he will do according to his will. Far more exceedingly above what we think or we imagine. We thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, are you happy? I say, ask your neighbor and you are, ask your neighbor. What are they saying? Amen. I told you this is a happy church. Amen. This is a happy church and we will be happy. Amen. My prayer and my heart desire is that we will be happy. Amen. Each and every day of our life. Amen. See, every time when you travel, that is where you begin to realize that, see, the Lord has given us something very great. Take yourself out a little. Then you realize this is the best family you have. You realize this is the best moment of your life. You realize the good things that are happening to you, that when you are in it, you don't know it. 
you don't feel it. You don't see it. Amen. Amen. That's why each and every one of us will have to persevere. It's gold you have in your hand. But just like some time ago, see the white men came to some land. And the people took the diamonds and they were using them in catapult. So they can kill birds. Amen. They didn't realize that they had diamonds. Something that can enrich their life. So all they knew was that I just take it, put it in a catapult, and I can get some bed and go and roast. Hallelujah. And that is what happens to us. We become ignorant. Ignorant of the glory that is shining all around you. The moment you have. And we are ignorant of those moments. The glory that is all around you. Then you realize that you miss out. And one day you look back and you're like, oh, I miss it. But I'm praying that we will not miss this moment. We will not miss this family. Each and every one of us have a marvelous work to do. And that we will rise up today as it is day. We will seize the moment. Amen. Amen. All right, I started talking some few Sundays back about loyalty and disloyalty. Amen. Amen. Ask your neighbor, did you remember he was talking about loyalty and disloyalty? And we talk about why Judas betrayed Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you remember? Atiyah, good to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Why did Judas betray Jesus? Today I want to talk about something very important. Also from Bishop's book. Why loyalty is important. Seven reasons why the subject of loyalty is very important. Amen. Are you here? We've gone home. Seven reasons. My brother, I go to see you. Amen. It's a joy to see you. See, church, without, we are the house, the spiritual house of the Lord. Amen. And that's why it's always a joy to see each and every one of you. Because you make the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So why is the subject of loyalty very, very important? See, whilst I was traveling, I sat down last week with some friends. Some friends who don't know the Lord. These were friends from childhood and friends that the Lord has used in my life, you know. He releases people into your life, whether they are believers or unbelievers. Amen. And so he's used them mightily. And so each and every time you crave to see them. And whilst we were seated, we were actually talking. Somebody said, oh, now he's a pastor. And then the whole thing unfolded. Amen. It's a pastor. Now he had to explain why he believed in what he believed in. Because they don't believe in what you believe in. So somebody asked the question, which when I meditated upon more later, I realized it was a great revelation. It said, okay, so if you were born in Saudi Arabia, would you be a Christian? Or oh, there's every possibility you have been a Muslim. I say, yeah, you're right. If I were born in Riyadh or somewhere in some village somewhere there, probability that I'll be saying Lord Jesus Christ is very remote. Is that not true? Yeah. That is true. So if we were born in some village somewhere in Hindu village somewhere in India, <laughs> will you be a Christian? I so, say, yeah, that's also true. There's every pos- possibility that I'll be a Hindu. Amen. Okay. 
But the context in which this person was actually asking this question is basically to point out and say, okay, so if somebody is born in Saudi Arabia and is a Muslim, and then after five years doesn't know the Lord and die, do they go to hell or heaven? Or somebody is born in a Hindu village somewhere who doesn't know the Lord, do they go to heaven or hell? But you said, Jesus said, he is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one can come to the Father except through him. Amen. The pastor is put on board. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because what they're saying is factual. It is truthful. That I could have been a Muslim if I were born, or maybe whatever. That is the probability. I'm a Christian because I was born into Christianity. Most of us here, we're Christians. We're seated in this room today because we're born into something that actually we grow up to identify ourselves with. Is that not it, Abraham? Here? Amen. And so the question that came up and what I kept reflecting on is he asked, so tell me, what is the truth? Hallelujah. What is the truth? What is the truth? What will you have said? <laughs> Amen. Let's open our Bibles. Let's open our Bibles to John chapter 18. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 33 says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said to him, Are thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of yourself? I saying this thing right now of yourself. You see, if you're spiritual, You need to always rely on the Holy Spirit. Well, it's not your understanding. It's not your intellectual ability. In situations like this, it's not even your theological understanding. Pharisees will not have missed the point. I say, are you saying this of yourself? Or did others tell it to you of me? Then Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? That my friend said, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in these things. Am I? He said, no, you are not. Amen. Am I a Jew? And that was a very important question. Am I? Thy own nation and your chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? And Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then will my servants have fought that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. And Pilate therefore said to him, are thou then their king? And you are the king of the Jews. And Jesus answered, thou sayest that I am again. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the that I should bear witness unto what? For this cause I came that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth will hear my voice. I came to bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth will hear my voice. And then Pilate asked him, What is the truth? What is the truth? Amen. Amen. Talking about loyalty and disloyalty. What is the truth? See, most of the time, and what was happening 
you know, when our eyes are blinded, what we don't actually come to understand, it's, it's what the Bible says, thou shalt not judge. Have I made you a judge over somebody else's house? Are you the one that created the universe? Are you the one that put the Hindu into Hindu land or the Muslim into Saudi Arabia? What concerns are where they go? What about you? Have you known the truth for yourself? What about you? The Christianity you have, what does it mean to you? Hmm? What if I say this one should not die and should remain until I come? What have I to do with it? Do you know the truth? The truth of what you have. See, backsliders, see, which is where we're blinded, is that we will want to marry the waters and begin to now think about, okay, what about this or that? And because of, you know, no. You think about what you have in your hands. How faithful and how truthful are you to that? That is what matters most. And not somebody in Hindu land or somebody in whatever. What is the truth? Are you here or you've gone home? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, that was really a very wonderful moment. But I think the Holy Spirit is always with me. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. So we're talking about why is loyalty very important to a Christian. And I believe I'm speaking to Christians, not to Muslims or Hindus. I'm speaking to those who believe in the Lord. If at the end you don't believe in the Lord, I'll lead you to believe in the Lord. Confess Him as your Lord and Savior. And follow Him. Seek the truth from Him. If only you believe. Because in the end, that is what matters most to you. Hallelujah. Let a man so account, so account of you, as what? Ministers of Christ. Let somebody account of you as a Christian. Let somebody testify about you as a child of God. When you get to those arguments, would they see you still as a child of God? Or are you quickly swayed into misunderstandings? Amen. Amen. And verse 2 says what? Moreover, it is a requirement for every steward that we be found what? Faithful. And who is steward here? Who is the steward? And so you say it's required of every Christian, if you are a Christian. And if Muslim is reading this, it is required of every Muslim that they be faithful. And if you are Christian, are you then faithful? That is the question. Where is your faithfulness? What is the truth for you? It is required that we be found faithful. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 10 tells us, Guess be the one that work the Lord's work deceitfully. Instead of concerning yourself about some Muslim, what about you? Guess be the one that works the works of the Lord what? deceitfully. And guess be he that keep it back his hand from blood. The one that only says, oh yeah, I belong as well. And quickly gets confused when unbelievers come and begin. Your friends are all unbelievers. Everything around you, it's all about the world. Does anybody love the world? Then the love of the Father is not in him. And so, when it comes to putting your hand into blood, 
when it comes to fulfilling what the Lord has called you to, which is a calling upon your life, there's nothing to testify for it. Guess the one that takes his hand out of the blood. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 27. Verse 26 also tells us, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the ways of this law to do them. I believe these are deep things. Cursed also is the one. Is it possible that maybe things are not going the way we really wanted because we've just been attracting curses into our life? Our lives are cursed. Cursed is the one that confirm not all the words of the law to do them. If anyone takes away the jot from it, it's better you were not born. To do them. And all the people shall say what? Amen. And all the people say, Amen. and then we confirm it. Amen. The confirmation is that we are cursed. If we don't look to confirm the word of the Lord. If we don't look to confirm our identity as the children of God. If we don't look to seek, he said as newborn babies, seek the sincere milk of the word. That you will grow thereby to do them. And the people were saying, amen. We believe, Lord. We accept it. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. I'm laying foundation for the word. Revelation chapter 3. It says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold or hot. Brother Paul, I know thy works. I will that you were Muslim. Oh, uh, faithful Christian. When you count in between, we don't know whether you are Muslim or you are a Hindu or you are a Christian. You know your work. Or an atheist. Huh? When you say you believe, what does it mean? What is the truth? What is the truth in saying I'm a child of God? What is the truth to say I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? What is the truth? I win that you were hot when you truly say I'm a child of God that everyone will truly confirm that this one he she is truly a child of the living God. Let a man so account of us. See, in other words, the light you're shining is what somebody will see. If there's darkness all around you, what you shine is what a man account of us as what faithful children of the living God. Amen. Amen. So, we actually, the last time we're talking about loyalty and loyalty and talk about why Judas betrayed Jesus. We said there are levels. You see, there are levels in Christianity and our walk with the Lord. Levels that we rise to, there are some that are baby or infant Christians, and some that are children, right? And then there's a mature stage. So there are different stages. When we come to the Lord, we need to be, it's just like, that's why the Lord told Nicodemus, unless you are born again, because it's a journey. It's like a child. And when you get born, then the expectation is that the child begins to actually move. And so if after 15 years, you're still just saying, I'm born again. <laughs> I'm just born. Then he asked for that, you have Koshoko. Even when you have Koshoko, at least after 15 years, we will have seen some level of growth, something, you know. There has to be some movement, Brother Ben. I mean, something that really indicates that, yeah. Amen. And you're still there. Say, I'm born again. 
Amen. So there are those levels we need to actually, you know, understand that in Christianity, there are stages. And that every child of God is expected to move from one stage to the other. Is that not true? And so disloyalty is born out of what? The spirit of immaturity. Mostly when you talk about loyalty and disloyalty, disloyalty comes from, you know, the level where people are immature in the things of the Lord. When you take your child, mostly the stupid things they do sometimes is because they are children. And that's so why sometimes when you look at it, you only laugh, you only smile. Because you expect a mature person will not do that. Is that not true? There's some things our children do. How many people will right now and say nobody should go anywhere until I finish the message and that we is pressing you and you just ha, pa, po, <laughs> release it. <laughs> Even when the gas is coming, you are holding your thing tight. <laughs> Because what? It's a sign of what? Maturity. That you don't just release, you know, just for the sake of... Uh, yesterday I was in the plane for 11 hours flight. You see, and anytime you sit in the plane, that's another revelation. See, you're actually in this box. And you are in the box with people you don't even know. You're sitting by someone and all of you at that point in time become one. You're one in your expectation. You're all looking forward to something as one. Everything that happens within that 11 hours, nothing else matters anymore. It is you. You don't care about whether your family is what not. Well, at that point, you are our family. Because when they say, boom, you are all going together. <laughs> Amen. And that was a deep revelation. And I said, Lord, you see, we don't come to understand the family that the Lord has given to us, which is called church. It is why he said, we leave everything and we come to cleave to the Lord. See, that is why our levels of maturity, you know, it's because we don't come to the truth, to the understanding. So when I come and I say, this is the most important family that the Lord has, you might not even, it's, oh yeah, it's church. Today, if I feel like coming, I come. If I don't, you know, it's, oh, if the church matures, oh, if the church grows, if somebody, oh, if, as for me, I'm just here, my salvation, I want to go to heaven. If that's the word, and that pilot, on that plane, should now decide, you know what? Everybody for himself. <laughs> Hallelujah! Ace! Yes. There'll be gnashing and crying. <laughs> Amen! Oh, Lord. You see, how many people have seen, you know, space ships go into space before? I mean, what do you call it? Astronauts, a shuttle. How many people have seen those things taken off before? By show of hand. Yeah, we see it on TV. Why? Have you been an astronaut before? <laughs> when you say who has seen it, are you an astronaut? <laughs> of course, you can only see it on TV. Amen. So we all have seen it on TV. Astronaut, not Navy. But what have we seen? When that space shuttle takes off, within two or three minutes, what happened? Some things start falling off. Fuel tank, everything needs to go off before it will be able to penetrate into space. If those things keep holding on, it will never get to space. It needs to fall off. You've never seen a time where they said a spaceship actually got to space with the fuel, with baggage, everything still holding on to it. 
So when we come to the Lord. Amen. Because of the, yes. Science students. Science students. Different between art students. You see, art students, you sit in there, you don't even know anything about gravity. And they say, gravity, you are dreaming. They say, which animal is that? It's porcupine. porcupine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you happy? You need to shut everything off. Because we need to be able to actually penetrate into. And when the Lord has called us, we need to be able to shut off. Amen. So we said, when we talk about disloyalty, it is just immaturity. And that is why it is very important to talk about it. You see, so we can mature. We can move from one stage to the other. Because the goal is that the end is near, no matter what. But anytime you hear that the end is near, don't be thinking about, oh, your world will come to an end one way or the other. <laughs> that is the wisdom. Mm-hmm. So, banker, I always tell you, majority of us, 50 years from now, even just put it, we will not be here. That is so. I can, you see, now I can prophesy to you, and you have no doubt. <laughs> Amen. You have no doubt about that prophecy. It's well and clear, black and white. Amen. Amen. Are you here? Yes. So, I also mentioned to you, you know, before I want to give you seven reasons, then we close. That it was so amazing, if you look at Luke chapter 6, verse 12 to 13, that Jesus, before he chose 12 disciples, the Bible says he went, prayed all night. Eh? This morning, Brother Ben, myself was here, you know, Shabbai, we crying out, praying. Why were we crying? That the Lord will come to our aid. Crying out to the Lord. That is why we pray. And the only thing the Bible tells us to do without ceasing is to pray. Because prayer puts you right in front of God. Communicate with Him. It makes you, you see, a child that is special is always talking to you. They have that relation. So, you see, if you're not praying, understand what level you are actually in the Lord. How close you are even to the Lord. And they say, come Friday, let's pray. And sitting at home. Or it is the pastor, maybe, and the wife, and, you know, well, yeah, I have other important things I'm going to do. And you know what level? How close you are. Amen. Amen. Are we here or we've gone home? Yeah. So it came to pass in those days that he went out into the mountain, and he did what? He did what? And then continued the whole night. How many times have we prayed here the whole night before? It's testify. <laughs> huh? Friday is only just from 8.30, right? And even by 10 o'clock, the way people will start looking, I have to say, oh, let's get her. Let's, Spirit, Holy Spirit, you know what? <laughs> we'll do it another time. Amen. He prayed the whole night and he chose 12. And the Bible says one of them was a betrayer. After the Son of God prayed the whole night. Which tells us that the things we deal with, the devil, it's not something small you actually take for granted. You don't just say, I'm Christian. See, why were these disciples, 12 of them, they were walking with the Lord. I stand before you as your pastor right now. Hmm? Not everything I even say that you believe. Or you identify or you, oh no, but these guys were with Jesus. Because what? It's a, pastor, where is the miracle? Pastor, you also do something. They don't have to cry to say, Jesus, pastor, where is the miracle? These guys were with him. They were seeing the miracle. Hmm? Wherever he goes, and not only were they seeing, my sister, 
He sent them out also when they came back confirming that in your name we saw the devil. Amen. That was the church. Powerful church. I mean, they could attest to it. Because everyone was spiritual. It was a spiritual house. Everyone can condemn the devil and he will flee. And so in your name, we cast out demons. Diseases when they hear cancer. Oh, just imagine it. QFC German town. Amen. It's not only everybody. But then it said in the end. Why? See, critical question. Why? Why then was those, at least one was standing by the cross, by almost 11 of them? Church. Talking about realities. And the reason is that because they did not have the mind of Christ. The mind, they know. The direction he was guiding them to. The ways and the things he was doing that was supposed to open up. When he cried, they could not understand why he keeps crying. And Jesus wept. They can't understand, you see. And so they have what is called the disloyalty come in. There, Operation was in a different direction and the Lord was moving in a different direction. They were thinking, where is our place in this kingdom? We're just fishermen. You see, Judas was from Kiriot. The rest were from Galilee. In that society, these guys meant nothing. I mean, go, go to the marketplace and see. When the Pharisees are in the big things and what, where is you talking about what? Peter and <laughs> So the guys were also thinking, hey, okay, if you are the Messiah, we actually are going to be in some good positions. They held on to that. And so when the Lord was showing them, every time they come to church, they walk out the same. Every time they hear the word, they walk out the same. Every time they see the miracles, the crowd, multiplying what? Five loaves of bread among so many. They see it, but they walk out the same. Their expectations in the kingdom are different. Their mindset is completely different. The way they think about it's completely different. And so, in the end, you are found wanting. When it matters most, when that last breath is now to be taken out, they ask in themselves now, where do we go to? This man looks like it's over for him. And you get to see one slap when you see the blood from here. When it matters most, Kobe. And say, where is the Christianity? What have you been doing for the 20 years you said you have been with the Lord? Are you here or are you gone home? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so that was how, see, the choices we make. We have choices every day about what we are going to do. And these disciples. They made a choice. A choice not to hear. Say today when you hear the voice of the Lord. How do you know? Early in the morning, take your Bible, ask the Holy Spirit, meditate upon the word. Be a true Christian who truly believes in getting close to the Lord. Hmm? Lean not on your understanding so you can be led. The steps of the righteous are what? Are ordered. Let your steps be ordered. But they were making a choice for three and a half years. For all they've been seeing. It can be love to QOC, Lighthouse, Chapel, whatever. But it doesn't profit them. It doesn't benefit. Because of all the seeing and all the hearing. Their heart are still 
had enough. Because they set up in their mind the way, it's just like my friends, they, I, I cannot change their mind. No matter how much preaching, you know, I realized that very quickly. And then I put in a different story. So we can move away from that. Because it is futile. Have we made church to become futile? This is why you will come every day and say, let's take our phone and call people before they come. But let's call. What has it turned out to be? That we believe in what we believe in. At least when you go to the mosque, I'm sure they don't go begging them to come and pray. It is full. Just go to any mosque. So what have we made out of the blood of Jesus Christ? We're talking about loyalty and disloyalty. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 10. I'm not sure if I can get to this, but gradually we'll get to it. Amen. I got things. These are very important. These are very important revelations. It's not about how big the sanctuary is. It's not about the pipe organs, you know. Like today, yeah, we will struggle, but we'll get there. <laughs> you change the key, and then you are on a different note. <laughs> Amen. It's not about that. It's about your experience with the Lord, your encounter. With, when you come to the house of God, it's about, Lord, I'm here, your child. Moreover, brethren, brethren of QFC, German town, I will not have you to be what? Ignorant. These are very important revelations. Maybe you will not hear it anywhere else. The Lord reveals to redeem. There has to be meaning to what we do. It has to flow from a conviction. Go and ask anybody who succeeds in anything they do. It is, there is an aspect of it called conviction. The conviction drives them to the result. If we don't have conviction about what, how do we expect to get results? When the Lord said, I send you to the uttermost part. How do we get result out of the name that is above every name that has been conferred upon us? And Paul encountered him. The conviction drove him even to death without he thinking back. Amen. I would not have you to be ignorant. How all our fathers were what? Under the cloud. It's in the Bible is written for our example. So when you hear our fathers first and say, oh, yeah, this is a revelation for us. They were all under the cloud. They were all called Christians. They were all called or now, what? Born again Christians. Even that, you take this, yeah. Tongue-talking Christians. Shabaya. In the Rebeke Yebeya. Shabaraya. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But what it said, don't be ignorant. See what I'm telling you this morning. It's just that we should not be ignorant. Amen. See, Paul was telling, he said, don't be ignorant. They were all hmm, under the sea. And they all passed through the same sea. Brother William, they all pass through. It should be a spiritual house. See, I always tell the Lord, I say, it should not just be just another church. And I know that is why not everybody huh, can even stick here. Where the fire is, it burns. We have to walk in faithfulness and truthfulness to what the calling is. Even if it remain two people. If I come on Sunday, it's two people, fine. That's what it is. A shame on us. When we sing, send us now to the world. We will go, Lord, take us to the world. 
every tribe and every tongue, every tribe and every tongue, your neighbors are there. <laughs> and when you sing, you're thinking of Australia. Why are you thinking of Australia? Ah. There are tongues all around you and tribes all around you. But what conviction do you have in what? I mean, that you can even tell somebody there's goodness in it. But when you open your mouth, there's no conviction in yourself. They were all. And they were all what? Baptized into what? Moses' baptism. Hmm? Now we will force you. Let's go and mess you. We will put you in. We will all. If you don't play in tongue, come. I'll pray for you. Pray. They were all. Receive it one. Receive it two. They were all. Hmm? They were all in the cloud. And that's it. You see, that's what I'm telling. You see, when you take the disciples, then you think, oh, they have. No. They're just like you and I. They were all. Which miracles have you not seen today? Somebody even come and testify. He say, ah, look at them. And he come and say, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. What power of God. He said, greater works will you do. He said, Jesus raised two or three people from the dead. But Smith Wigglehorst, for instance, raised almost about 12 or something from the dead. Greater works you will do. What are we not seeing? Today, they were all under, eh? and they did all eat the same spiritual meat, spoiled out to them, Sunday after Sunday. The same spiritual meat, they were all eating it. It was flowing. The Lord that didn't discriminate. When the manna was falling, he didn't say, "Oh, my brother, you know what." He needs to have a greater portion. <laughs> when they were even crying for the meat, they were they, they ate the same. Is that not true? The same. And they don't drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock is what? Jesus Christ. We have a spiritual rock following us. That rock is Jesus Christ. We are drinking from the same. Hmm? But then what? Next verse. But. When you see the word but. Start crying your heart. <laughs> because that is. The most important word there. In all you hear. The changing. See. The diversion. Is the word. But. I'm a Christian. But. I go to church every Sunday. And, amen. But. But. But, Lord. But. With many of them. God was not well pleased. God was not pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. See, the power that the Lord has given to a believer is for everyone. Prophet only shows the power because they're closer to the Lord. A pastor looks only different because they seek the word and they seek the voice of the Lord. But so is everyone. There could be someone you don't even call a pastor. You can be more closer to the Lord than anyone. Depends on your level, your closeness with the Lord, your understanding of what your calling is. Mercy, they were overthrown in the wilderness. This is our wilderness. Don't think about you are in your wilderness. What does wilderness actually mean? There is heat. <laughs> wilderness means there are some things you want, you can't get it. 
Each and every one of us, we live it. The moment you come out, eh, you start walking in your wilderness. Oh, yeah. You are in your wilderness. Trials and temptations, they will come. Troubles will be all around you. Hmm? Whilst we're walking with the, that's why I was singing the song. For the God on the mountain is the same God in the valley. When things go right for you, then you're talking about how much faith I have. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord, how beautiful thou art. When you come and the dancing, oh, the way you even turn it around, everybody knows that, hey. Amen. Get in the valley small. Even the church I want to live. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I can't stand this thing anymore. I'm out of here. <laughs> Faith is gone. Oh Lord, oh, this one, I can't tolerate it anymore. Where has faith run to? Where has the same God run to? That when the smiles over, but when that issue come, that one, I'm checking out. Amen. Amen. For they were overthrown. The next verse is what? And I'm closing. Now these things were what? They are the most critical things for you and I sitting here today. An examined life is not worth living. If you want to be like Bill Gates, you have to go follow his example. You have to go learn about what made him successful. They were written for our example. What does example mean? Example means you are trying to do something and this just guides you. Copy and paste. <laughs> Amen. You see, she's art student. Don't worry. <laughs> Science student will tell you when I see that example, I know cause A minus cause B equal to I'll be able to solve this other problem. Because what? I've seen the example. Is that not it? It's written. It's so the moment I see this, I know that this issue is conquered. I can solve this one. I can do all things through Christ who does what? Strengthen me. Why? Because I have example. The solution is in my hands. It's not that now that situation, oh, it's... I have example. But when that issue come, it's not running to the example. It run to something else. It is my own intellectual ability now. It is the way I think now. The way I feel. My own reasoning about this. That is what it is. And I go there, husband and wife. When the Lord says, whatever he Puts together, let no man put us on. The example is there for us. There are examples. What is our conviction? I say, Lord, I have the example. They were written for our example. To the intent. The intent is that you should not fail that examination. That is why the examiner in setting the question puts the example there. That when you do this and this and that and that, this is what you come to. Therefore, I give you this question. Solve it. Solve it. Man, you call, you know, looking at the example. You know, examining that example. You know, critically analyzing that example. The question is there. And you want to fail the exam. You want to fail it. And so Sunday after Sunday. Instead of rising in the power and the glory of God, we want to fail it. I was telling my brother who picked me yesterday, I said, Look, yeah, you see, things happen in our life, and mostly the Lord allows it 
for a purpose. It is sometimes to take us higher. It's sometimes to do something very important for you. But if we don't dwell on examples in solving those, we will keep repeating class one for 20 years. We're still in class one. And so when people are advancing, they are receiving big certificates and are rising. You're still in class one. Pastor, can you pray about this one for me? Uh, they said some prophet is coming to Pennsylvania next week. I need to be there. And then in front of the stage. So when the prophet, the, 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 the saliva comes out of his mouth when he's preaching. <laughs> sprays, <laughs> sprays on me. <laughs> Hallelujah! Zim, zim, za! So that it can, but it's written for our example, in the intent that we should not what last after the evil things. Why do you want to fall the same way? The same way you want to fall. The same way that you had the Hollywood people are falling, you want to go down the same way. To the intent that we should not fall on the same rock. Of offense to the intent that we should be better to the intent that people should see us and see something different to the intent that they should not fall that is what the Lord has called it. that is what this is about as it was Sunday morning Wednesday Friday whatever time the children of God meet that is what it's about and if we don't understand it that's why it's difficult. Difficult. See, it's a small room on a Sunday, but you can count it. It's difficult. See, most of the time I see, when you go to India, you see those Hindus. Oh, man. They committed. Go and take the Muslims. They committed. They committed. And you come to as a Christian nation, and our children are going Wayward. Just open the TV and your heart is broken. It's a Christian nation. At least we want to talk about Al-Qaeda and how they're cutting people's throats. What about have we examined ourselves? It's supposed to be God's own country. To the intent, intent, that the same evil lasts. Same evil. Don't be an equally yoke with an unbeliever, but the unbeliever is the one that is. I wrote something to somebody today. I woke up. I just broke. I said, Look, funny, you can hold fast to the Lord. So the things I used to do, I do them no more. The friends I used to have, I have them no more. How do you expect to rise when you are supposed to be speaking to someone, but they are the one that are, and they'll tell you tomorrow we're having the party? And, come, and the same. How do you think that you can be mature in the house of God? When a preacher man is saying, he said, oh, you know, I was hearing the radio the other time. He said, this one, he doesn't even know how to preach. And so I was saying, what is in this for me? Maybe just one word. Or he's not dressing like, or like T.D. Jakes. So let me go. Oh, he doesn't. But you see, you've forgotten that the Lord releases a man for everyone. We're sitting here. It means that word is through me to you. Amen. And if only you can open up your ears and your spirit. Amen. You. Amen. Amen. I'm closing. And then where's my scripture? Let me close. Okay. The next verse says what? Neither be ye what? Idolaters. As were some of them, as it's written, the people sat down to eat and they drank. And then when they rise out, out of here, they go and play. <laughs> Brother William, they go and play. Amen. The moment they rise out, they go and play. Neither let us commit what? Fornication. As some of them, so you see, it's just now breaking down. The example... <laughs> See, these are just examples. 
The same thing in another way. What is the difference between a believer and an unbeliever? When we walk out of here. And the son unbeliever solve the problem. Different than the believer. When they, they go and then they play. Hmm? Fornication. So don't think. You see these ones are just. Think yourself what you are doing. And put it in, in there. Oh, they didn't mention that one, so no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's there. And Phil, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by a serpent. Next. Neither remember ye as some of them also. So it's, I mean, it's trying to get an example. Things that destroy. The things that destroy the church. That is why, you see, I'm going to be talking about truth. Reality of what destroys the church. Causes our fire not to burn. Causes this house cannot grow in any way. And we come, we polish ourselves. And then we go, we polish. and we, It's like the same shoe. One day it will tear. <laughs> and when you want to polish, you realize that the polishing is not working anymore. <laughs> Because you're polishing the same thing, the same thing. At least you need to get some one new other shoe. Huh? Polish the same things, the same things. <laughs> and then one day when you even say, shoe, where are you? Say, okay, I don't even know where I am. <laughs> Hallelujah! Lord have mercy on us. And they were, what? Written for our admonition. See, again. Upon whom? The ends of the world will come. Amen. Upon whom I believe I've laid a very strong foundation. Amen. And next week I begin to tell you about why it is good to be faithful. Why is it for us to keep examining ourselves? Why is it good for us to rise up in the kingdom of God and allow the Lord to use us? Why we can overcome the issues and the problems. If only we seek the face of the Lord. Seek the voice of God. So he will give you peace that passes all understanding. Sometimes in that situation, all you need is just peace in your heart. And it will be resolved. In Jesus' name. All you need is just keep believing. That makes you different from someone else. What will be freaking somebody out? What will make somebody go and commit a mistake that would drive their lives to naught? You will have just one seed of the Holy Spirit, patience. And said, with patience, I will overcome. Just one seed with just patience. It's written for our example. Shall we rise to our feet? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Father of life, draw me closer. Mm -hmm. Lord, my heart is set on you. Let me run the race of time with your life unfolding mine and let there be of God, let it rain. Oh, Holy Spirit, oh, Holy Spirit, oh, Holy Spirit, you my comfort, strengthen, strengthen me, strengthen me, hold my hand up high, and I stand upon your truth. Bringing glory unto you, and let the peace of God let it rain. Oh Lord, I hunger. Oh Lord, I hunger for more of you. Rise up, rise up within me. Let me know. Let me know your truth. Oh yeah, oh Holy Spirit, saturate my soul and let the light of God fill me now, fill me now. 
Let your healing power bring life and make me whole. And let the peace of God let it rain. Just put your hand on your heart. Let's pray. Lord, how vulnerable we are. How weak we are. But that is why you send your word to strengthen us. Send your word to heal us. I pray, Lord, that we'll rise in faithfulness. I pray, Lord, that in the end we will hear you saying, Thou good and faithful servant. Thank you for your word. It cannot go and come back void. We penetrate it to each and every heart. Lord, I believe that we are all walking out of here today. Wash and cleanse. A wisdom, Lord. Spirit of wisdom has come nigh. And we will never be the same. Thanks for your healing. Your healing power this morning. For every soul. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. And if you are here this afternoon. So there was a day Nicodemus came to the Lord and said, We know that you are the prophet. You are. So many people's eyes are blind. But we, see, even though publicly we don't say it, we know. And Jesus told him, Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. I believe in the word of Jesus. I believe he was the son of God. And if he says so, and this afternoon I want to give you the opportunity. Say, if anyone come to him, he will in no wise cast out. It only takes it confessing before men. And he will confess you before the Father who is in heaven. So maybe you have been coming. Or maybe you are new. You've heard the word, but you've never taken that bold step of faith before. I want to give you the opportunity right now. Come and I'll pray with you. We pray because we believe that our Lord hears us and He is here right now. He will take you, He will wash you, He will cleanse you and will make you anew. So with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, calling out to you, don't walk out of here and regret it. When you hear the word right now, don't hide in your heart. It's not about anyone. It's all about you. Just raise up your hand and I'll pray with you. I'll lead you to the Lord this afternoon. Your life will be transformed spiritually. Nothing is going to change about your nose. It will still be the same. But spiritually, you're going to rise out of darkness in marvelous light. Anybody wants to give their life to Christ? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your children. We are all children who have believed in you. Take us to a higher level. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to take our communion very quickly. Jesus said, as often as we do it, we do it in remembrance. It's written for our example. That he died and he rose again. And that the power in his body and his blood it moves mountains. Demons tremble when they see his blood. And that any issue will succumb. Any problems they are no more powerful than the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. So as you rise in faith today, and you take this, believe, pray, and receive your miracles in Jesus' name. So we go around and share it quickly. Brothers, sisters, we are young, and our life has just begun. In the spirit, we are young. And we will live forever. Sons of God, let's hear His holy word. We are gathered around the table of the Lord. Let's eat His body, let's drink His blood. And we will sing a song of love. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Verse 2, shout. Shout together to the Lord Who has promised our reward Happiness 
a thousand fold, and we will live forever. Sons of God, let's hear His holy word. Gather round the table of the Lord. Eat His body, let's drink His blood, and we will sing. A song of love, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. From giving to you what the Lord has commanded us, that on the night he was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples as we gathered right now. He's here. And he took bread. He broke it and he gave it to them. Each one took a piece. He told them that this is a body that will be parted, shed for them. And that they will not be broken anymore. That issue, that problem, as the body is broken this afternoon, is being broken completely out of your life. That disease is being taken away completely in the name of Jesus. Just rise it and believe. You shall say after me, the body of Christ. Take it in faith, believe in it. And receive miracles. And the Bible also says after they've eaten, he took the cup. He's the most precious. The precious blood of Jesus Christ redeems. He said this is a cup of the new and everlasting covenant he's going to make. Anyone who believes in his name will be saved. As you walk in the faith today, Take this blood. It is precious. It is powerful. More powerful than anything you can imagine in this universe. Apply it. Take the blood. It's just like soap. Apply it. Let it work in your life. Let it bring the light to shine upon every darkness. Redemption to those who are in captivity. Broken the chains of evil. That we will rise into a greater glory. We will become greater instruments for the salvation of the Lord. And so say after me, with all your heart of believing, the blood of Jesus. Precious blood of Jesus. Redemptive blood of Jesus. As you believe, let it work for you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We believe. I believe. That yes, as your blood has touched us, Lord, we have strength. We are more than overcomers. The devil's holes are broken in your name. Because there's power in your blood. Healing has come in your name. Marital issues, Lord. Oh, yes. Your wisdom causes us to walk in the path of goodness. Devil, you are defeated. You have no hold over the children of God anymore. But we're rising with the blood. Apply the blood. We are made whole. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give a clap offering unto the Lord. Amen. Shall we be seated? Amen. If you have your tithe, my time is completely out. Forgive me. Come, let me pray for you quickly. And take your second offering. Take your second offering. If you are not here before we take offering, please take offering. Let the Lord bless you. This is what keeps the kingdom sustained. The Lord has given us the opportunity to build His house. The gates of hell will not prevail. Do you have your offering? Just take it, raise it. And let me pray for you. Anybody with offering? Father, behold the hands, Lord, I give. Your word says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And we believe in your word. So let the rain fall. Saturate every home. Every hand that giveth, Lord, cause it to receive more abundantly according to your word. But we thank you for faithfulness, Lord. A tenth is what you command. And this is where the evil one comes to tell us, whisper to us, by anyone, Lord, who overcome, they wear the crown. We're standing here, Lord, but come in every other voice. Say, Lord, we want to build your house. We thank for what you've given to us. 
So bless it according to your word. Multiply. Shake it. Let overflow in Lord come to bear his home. Joy and the peace ring in the name of Jesus. Let Fasia see your glory, Lord. Faithfulness brings fruits. Let the fruits be born. Desires of the heart be fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, Kobe and his household. Lord, your faithfulness. As we are faithful, so are you faithful to us. No is it. As she's faithful, Lord, open doors. Cause her to rise in your glory. Oh, thank you for Didi. Let her grow and be a wonderful vessel, Lord. She continues to be faithful for Mount Hall and for Yajira. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, so we'll take a few announcements and then we are out of here. So this is, if today is your first time, amen. We are so joyful. You can see why we are so joyful. <laughs> amen. 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 Are you still here? You've gone already. All right. If today is your first time, we want to give you Kodesh family, church, welcome. So I want you to just rise your feet and then we will bless you with the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Anybody for the first time? We love you with the love of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. We can see in you the glory of the Lord. Yes, we love you with the love. Can all stretch your hands towards them, Lord. We thank you. It's a day of Sabbath, and what a joy that they can come fellowship with us. Pray, committing their heart and soul to you, Lord. Lead them in a path of righteousness for your name's sake, and faith will never depart from your house. We thank you in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right, <laughs> Hallelujah, Amen. All right, so a few announcements, then we are out. Uh, can you please be seated, please? And let's take a few announcements so we can close, close the church properly. Amen. Hallelujah. How many people are happy? Is it a wonderful day? It's a day to be in the house of the Lord. So if you're happy next time, bring somebody. Don't only be happy alone. Amen. See, one day the Lord is going to ask us because... Especially from the beginning of this year. We've seen a lot of people coming. Amen. Every Sunday there's somebody new coming. Is that not a blessing? But what are we doing about it? Why is the house still empty? Amen. When some of us are dreaming of a huge cathedral. Huh? And you sit here, even the small chairs cannot get... <laughs> Meanwhile, there are people out there who are dying and going to hell. Amen. Oh, okay. We have birthdays too, but let me just let me just do the announcement quickly so we do the birthday, then we go. Amen. So one critical announcement, it's that uh, every year we celebrate what is called the Founders Day. Amen. Founders Day is just the shepherd that the Lord has for you is your birthday. You see? Uh-huh. So we're going to celebrate birthday, right? And so it's going to be Bishop Dark's birthday. And the only thing Bishop Dark wants. Amen. Uh, yeah, that you can. But you see, we have a father who on his birthday, he himself will make sure 
He is out there when every birthday. You will see by this time, you're going to see that there will be some healing Jesus somewhere. He never stays and says, you tell you, come and do anything. Because to him, a soul is the most important. So the major thing that we are required to do on his birthday, in celebrating his birthday, is to have outrages, crusades, or soul winning activities. That is all that is required of us. To honor the man of God. Amen. The whole honoring is that we go and you also say, he is somewhere winning millions of souls, but I also at least on that day I can win one soul. And I can plant that seed in the house of God. Is that, you know, that is the only way to honor. Is it not a good policy? And so it will be May 20th, and on Sunday we're going to tell you what we're going to do on May 20th. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And don't take yourself out. So it's most precious. Hey, Naomi, is it your birthday? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. And then, we, you know, we have on the, um, Wednesdays, we have service. My understanding is that it has become a club for few. Few, <laughs> few who, they will say, they, they have nothing doing, so they come Wednesday. It's our teaching service. Amen. So please, I'm, I'm begging you. Come. It's just one hour from 8. I even start 7.30 just praying. 8 by 10, 9 o'clock we are out of here. I mean, you know me, right? Yeah, we'll be out now. So at least if you trust me that when I say time, I don't go yeah, like today. That's why I'm begging you that I've gone a little bit over. See, then come. Amen. And then Fridays, we pray. Pray without season. We are here. And then we pray, so come. Amen. Amen. All right. And then in the mornings, also we pray five to six. If you have celebrated your birthday in the month of April, what an honor. We want to honor you with this beautiful cake. So just come to me. April bonds. Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true. God's mercies and blessings rain down upon One more time. Happy birthday to you. To Jesus be true. God's mercies and blessings rain down upon Oh, one more time, one more time. Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true, God's mercies and Is it your birthday? Ray down our oh, Hip, 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 hip. Hooray. Hallelujah. So it's a wonderful thing. Hooray. Amen. See, we don't have tomorrow in our power. So when you come to 12 months, it is a wonderful thing to say, thank you, Lord. That is why in this church, we don't miss it. Amen. So I want you to just rise up. Finally, and we're closing. I want you to stretch forth your hands towards them. And I want you to pray a prayer of thanksgiving. Tell the Lord we thank the Lord so much for 12 months. And commit the coming year also. It's a year of good things. That good things will fall on them. Sicknesses are taken away. Frustrations, we want to burn in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Pray for them right now. A decree, a thing also, it will come to pass. Thank you for birthdays. Thank you that, yes, your hands have been upon them. You uphold them in your loving hands. Lord, we ask, Lord, may your grace be upon them in the coming year. I pray your faithfulness, Lord. Of faithfulness. Let your light so shine. No darkness will comprehend. That they will have a fruitful year and come next year by this time, we will all be gathered here giving the glory to you again. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you want to cut your cake? Where is the knife? Okay, so all of you, you, you know how they do it, right? Okay, everybody hold the knife. Okay, okay. Atia, yeah. Hey, Kobe. 
Uh, yeah. Hey. All right. Hey, let Nana. Hey, you are covering the ladies. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Hold the thing on the thing. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give a clap offering to the Lord. All right. Nobody go anywhere. As we're standing. Amen. All right. We're going to share our benediction. It's been a wonderful time in the presence of God. It's been a gracious time. The Lord has spoken mightily to us. And as we walk out of here, we're going to walk in the power of the Lord. Outside are the dogs, the devourers, troubles and issues. But we overcame by the blood of the Lamb. And so we pray that the blood will keep us safe. Safe on the roads. In our workplaces, favor will come to us. The issues and problems that are seeking to devour us, oh, the Lord will give us grace. It's only the grace of God. The Lord we will have a fruitful week, a productive week, a peaceful week, a safe week, Lord. We will not hear any news, nothing that will trouble our hearts. And we'll come gathered again before you. Lord, we'll win souls for you, Lord. This week, our hearts will be yearn to talking to somebody about you. Lead us and guide us as we go. We go with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hold somebody's hand and let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, the fellowship, the contribution, the participation of the Holy Spirit, and our souls, souls. Amen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>